What up guys, Froggy here, and today I'm going to be talking about why the Mavic Mini is the drone for everyone except professionals. So about a month ago, DJI introduced the Mavic Mini to the world. Now, I was lucky enough to be at one of the presentations where I got to see it for the first time, and I think everyone was super impressed with what DJI was able to pull off. The biggest thing about this drone is the size of it, and specifically how much it weighs. This thing is absolutely tiny. It feels like you're holding a little toy replica of the Mavic Pro because the design is identical, just scaled down. And the weight of it is only 249 grams. What? For anyone who doesn't know why that weight makes it very special, it's because a lot of drone laws around the world require you to get a license and register your drone if your drone is 250 grams or more. And any drone over 250 grams also limits where you can legally fly. But anything under 250 grams, well, it's kind of considered like a toy. That means it doesn't require a license to fly, and depending where you live, you might not even have to register it. Now, this law might change at some point in the future, specifically because of this drone, but as of right now, now, the Mavic Mini is basically just a toy. You can tell how proud DJI is of being able to skim the weight all the way down to 249 grams because they literally printed the weight on the side of the drone. I really wasn't expecting that, but I think they did that just in case you're flying it and someone kind of gives you some trouble. You can just show them the drone and show them that, look, it says 249 grams and then hopefully they'll leave you alone. So those are the main features that make this drone incredible. The small size of it and the lightweight of it. Now my friend Kevin just got a Mavic Mini so we went out the other day to see how well it shoots video. Alright guys we're here with Kevin. Mavic who, Mini time. Who just got his new Mavic Mini. What? Well that's really quiet too. Damn. <laughs> now when you scale the size of a product down, it usually comes at the cost of losing a few features. And this drone does have a few features and specs that are skimmed down compared to its big brothers. For one, the camera is only 2.7K instead of 4K. Now I think that's fine because at first I was actually worried that it would only be a 1080p camera, but 2.7K is a nice resolution in between 1080p and 4K. So we could shoot 2.7K at 30 frames per second and 24 frames per second, which I think it's pretty good. I'm glad they included 24 frames per second instead of just 30 frames per second because a lot of cameras lately have only been giving us 30 frames per second. Looking at you, Canon. Now, how does the footage actually look from the Mavic Mini? I gotta say, it's pretty good. It's not incredible or amazing, but it's really, really decently good. It's obviously not gonna be as good as the bigger drones, but for the size and weight of this thing, the footage is pretty good. The only thing that bothers me is that the bitrate on the camera is only 40 megabits per second. If you don't know what bitrate is, it basically means how well the camera captures the data that's being recorded. A low bitrate usually results in some muggy areas in the image where there's a tight pattern like trees or grass, for example. But a high bitrate is able to process that information more efficiently, which gives you a clearer image. The Mavic Air and the Mavic 2 Pro record at a bitrate of 100 megabits per second which is more than double the 40 megabits per second that the Mini has. I think it's actually the exact same camera that they used on the DJI Spark because when you look at the Spark camera and the Mavic Mini camera, they look identical to each other. So I think DJI is using the Spark camera, but they were able to get 2.7K out of it instead of 1080p like the Spark did. And the footage looks pretty identical to what you would get on the Spark, just that it's at a slightly higher resolution. Now this leads me to a big con about this camera, and this is where the line is drawn between this drone being for everyone and professionals. The exposure control on this thing is 
fully automatic. That means you have zero control over how bright your image is. You can't control the shutter speed or the ISO. And this results in the images sometimes being brighter or darker than you would actually like them to be. This is visible in these examples here where the camera adjusts its brightness based on what it thinks it should be instead of letting you control how bright the image should actually be. This also results in certain shots being more grainy than they should be because the camera just boosts the ISO to get a bright enough image when it really didn't have to boost it that high. Now I understand why DJI would do this because they want this to be an easy drone for everyone to use. Most people don't understand shutter speed or ISO and how it affects the image. So DJI throws it all out the window and makes the camera fully automatic. So that's my biggest reason why this drone is meant for everyone except professionals. Now this doesn't mean you can't use the drone on a somewhat professional shoot, but realistically you're better off going with at least a Mavic Air just so you could have full control over your image. The Mavic Mini also doesn't feature any log profiles which let you get more dynamic range out of the camera, but let's be honest, the average user wouldn't understand why they would want to shoot in log anyways. A few other features that it's missing is the ability to shoot raw photos, which again lets you play with the image more because it captures more dynamic range. It also only features obstacle avoidance sensors on the bottom of the drone, so you have to be a little bit more careful when flying because if you're flying into a wall, the drone ain't gonna stop itself. DJI said they couldn't include more sensors because that would just bring the weight of the drone above 250 grams, and that makes sense. So Kevin, since this is your first drone, how do you find the flying? Is it easy? Yeah, pretty easy. Two or three flights and you'll get the hang of it. Now another thing I wanted to mention is that this drone uses a Wi-Fi signal similar to the Mavic Air instead of OcuSync like the Mavic 2 Pro has. And it's rated for the same distance as the Mavic Air, so I thought the signal strength would be about the same on these two drones. But when I flew my Air with Kevin's Mini, the signal actually seemed to be a lot stronger on the Mini than it was on the Air. Now granted, there's about two years of technological advancement between the two drones, so it would make sense that the Mini has a stronger signal than this two year old Mavic Air, but I thought that's something I should mention since the signal on the air gets really sketchy if there's an obstacle between the controller and the drone. Alright, so that's about it. Those are my reasons why the Mavic Mini is for everyone except professionals. It's easy to use, it's easy to fly, it's easy to get a nice image. They even made a separate app for it, which is supposed to be easier to use than the app used for the other drones. But the fact that the camera on this drone is fully automatic makes this drone for everyone except the pros. So thank you all for watching. I'm gonna leave an Amazon link down below if you wanna go add to cart, you know what I'm saying? Don't tell the wife, but if she asks, tell her it's for the kids. And please subscribe and smash that like button because hopefully this video helped you realize whether this drone is for you or whether you want to be a professional. All right, peace guys.